Plant adaptations are um, special features that plants have that allow them to live in a particular environment. So we're going to start out by looking at six of the certain environments that some plants have adapted to. And the first environment is a desert. And in the desert, you have some plants. Um, plants are really trying to conserve water in the desert because water is scarce. So two of the ways that they can do that are to have curled leaves where um, water can't escape the leaf because it's curled up and so the curls of the leaf catch the moisture as it leaves the plant. Um, so that prevents water loss. And then some plants have a thick waxy cuticle. So you can th think of the way a cactus feels. It's a very thick uh, rubbery surface. That keeps water from escaping as well. So a lot of desert plants will have those things. The second environment is a grassland. In a grassland, um, plants have to fight really high winds because there's no trees to break up the wind. It can just pick up speed across the plains. And so a lot of times the plants that live in a grassland have to have very flexible stems so that when, when the bl wind blows, they don't break um, and they'll bend with the wind. So that allows them to survive those high winds. And then they also need to have deep roots because in the grassland, often they're trying to get water from um, from the groundwater, from reservoirs underground, and so they need to be able to reach down and get water that's soaked down because they don't get rain very often. In the rainforest, uh, rather than trying to conserve water, the thing that's scarce in a rainforest is sunlight, and so a lot of plants are trying to make up for that by having some adaptations to help them gather sunlight. Now, uh, one of the things that a lot of the trees in the rainforest will have is a buttressed tree trunk. And so that's the shape of the tree trunk that kind of has a very, very wide base and it gets narrower towards the top. That's a buttressed tree trunk. And um, what that allows them to do is grow very tall. So it gives them a good support at the base so that they can grow tall to be able to reach the sunlight at the top of the canopy. Um, and then sometimes you'll see vines growing on trees like you can see here. There's some vines that are growing up the tree trunk and um, what that allows them to do is reach the top of the canopy as well. So the vines don't have a strong enough stem to grow tall themselves but they can climb the trunk of the tree to be able to get to the sunlight. Alright, the next um, environment we're going to look at is the deciduous forest. And deciduous means um, these are plants that lose their leaves. So that's what that word deciduous me means, is that they are going to lose their leaves. Um, and that's an adaptation that these plants have developed to allow them to um, survive cold winters where they get heavy snow. Because when they drop their leaves, then the snow can't accumulate on the leaf and weigh the plant down. And so that allows them to survive the winters and not have their branches break off because they get too heavy with the snow. It also prevents water loss in the winter time. So when they're not really performing a lot of photosynthesis in the winter, they just drop their leaves. That way the water can't escape from the leaves. And the other thing that they have is thick bark on the trees. And what this allows them to do is um, protect themselves from cold weather. It conserves heat. It conserves water. Um, and it can also protect them from predators, so the, the bark of the tree is its own protection. The next environment is the taiga, um, and this is an area where it's very, very cold, usually in mountain ranges. Um, think of a lot of snow, the taiga is a very cold area. And in this area you're going to see a lot of um, sort of Christmas tree-like plants where the um, branches kind of slope downward and so you can kind of see how they kind of make this triangular shape because they slope downward and that's so that the snow will just fall off of the branches it doesn't really accumulate and you'll see some snow piled up here but not much and that also protects those branches from breaking and so that allows them to survive heavy snow and then you'll also see a lot of um, trees that have needle like leaves and that conserves water because the needle-like leaves don't have a lot of surface area to lose water through and um, <clears throat> and it allows them to conserve heat. So those needle-like leaves prevent water loss primarily. 
And then you have the tundra, and even though it doesn't look cold in the picture, the tundra is very, very cold. Um, it's going to be in the tops of mountains, above the tree line, and in arctic areas. That's what we call tundra. And in the tundra, a lot of plants will grow in clumps. And by growing in clumps, it protects them from high winds, from um, cold weather, and they can clump together for that protection. And you'll also see a lot of plants that have dark colors. And this allows them to absorb heat because it's very, very cold in the tundra. And so you'll see a lot of reds and browns in the color of the leaves. Alright, um, to look at some specific adaptations, we've got some adaptations specifically for um, the things that plants need most. Water, sunlight, protection, and reproduction. So let's start by looking at water. Now before we can really look at the adaptations for water, you need to know a little bit about transpiration. Um, so plants in their leaves have these little tiny holes and you can see a picture here of the holes. This is a stomata. This one is closed, this, this one is closed, this one is open. Um, and through those holes they get carbon dioxide that they need for photosynthesis, but while they're getting that carbon dioxide, some water can escape. And so guard cells are on either side of the little hole, the stomata, so that it can open and close that hole so it doesn't let too much water out. Um, so it controls how much water can leave. Alright, so the process by which that water vapor escapes is called transpiration. And so this is something that a lot of plants have to adapt for because they don't want to lose that water. To conserve water, sometimes plants will only open their stomata at night when the heat of the sun doesn't cause that water to evaporate. Um, some plants have curled leaves like we looked at in the desert, and it traps moisture, keeps it from escaping. Some plants in the desert don't even have leaves, things like cactuses. Um, they just perform photosynthesis in their stems, and so the stem doesn't lose nearly as much water, and so they don't worry about actually having leaves because that would lose too much water. And then some plants that live in really hot and dry places have a thick, waxy cuticle, um, and that keeps water from escaping. So think about the surface of a cactus. It's very waxy, and um, it's a tough outer coating. That keeps the water from escaping. All right, now let's look at some adaptations for sunlight. This is going to be mainly plants in places like uh, the rainforest, where sunlight is scarce because it's blocked by other plants. So if you are a plant that lives in the water, you need to be able to stay on the surface of the water. So some plants have leaves that can float, like a lily pad. They have little air pockets underneath the leaf so that it can float on top of the water and it can take in sunlight, because if it sunk down into the bottom of the water, they wouldn't be able to get enough sunlight. And then, like we saw in the rainforest, some vines can climb up tree trunks so that they can reach the top of the canopy and get to that sunlight there. So sometimes you'll have... Um, plants do that to be able to get their sunlight. Now let's look at some adaptations for protection. Um, for protection, plants often use thorns, like you see here on the rose bush. Um, that's a really good protection from predators. And then some plants are poisonous, um, so they, they get a bad reputation with animals and humans, things like poison ivy, so that they just leave them alone. It prevents predators from messing with them. Um, they might even have a bad taste, things might be bitter, or they might have a bad smell, and that keeps things from wanting to eat them. So that's a way to protect themselves from predators. And then lastly, we have some adaptations for reproduction. So a lot of plants um, require pollinators, things like bees, to carry pollen to other plants so that they can reproduce. And so the pollinator might be, um, might be the wind, too. It doesn't have to be an animal, but bees are a common one that carry pollen from plant to plant. And so they'll have adaptations to attract these pollinators. And so one of the ways they attract pollinators is by having brightly colored flowers so that the bee can see the flower really easily and it's attracted to it. They might even have an attractive smell. A lot of flowers smell really nice so that the bee wants to come and it's easy to find that flower because of its smell. And then they also might have a special shape to their flower. So you can see here in the picture with the hummingbird, 
you've got um, kind of a long skinny flower shape that's so that the hummingbird's beak can fit down in there and get the nectar and so this flower has a special shape so that the bird can get to its nectar and in the process carry pollen to other plants. 